So let's say that you were the last survivor of a universe before our own, but then when your universe collapsed into sort of a big crunch, you were sealed away in a cosmic egg only to reemerge in our universe and then exist as pure energy, but then built a suit to contain that pure energy, which you had to sustain by draining the life energies of other planets. What would happen if you ate the Earth, and what would you get out of it? Of course I'm talking about Galactus, perhaps the most feared being in the Marvel Universe. He comes from a time before the Big Bang and must supply his awesome, almost limitless power by feeding on planets. But what would happen if he came to Earth? Specifically, at DoveG5 underscore asked me, what would the Earth taste like if Galactus ate it? Well, to be a comics nerd for just a second, although he is known as the consumer of worlds, he doesn't physically eat any planets. Instead, he drains their life energies. So I'm gonna try to answer that question instead. Although if Galactus ate all of the ants on Earth, they would be intensely sour because of all the formic acid they contain. <coughs> 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 In Marvel's Annihilation number three, we see that Galactus doesn't eat planets or just drain them. Instead, he converts matter into energy to sustain his cosmic hunger. And matter energy conversion is something that we can actually put numbers to. We just have to decide what is getting consumed. <coughs> Ants. If I had to guess what life energies meant, it would probably be Earth's biosphere. The biosphere is the ecological system that contains all life on Earth, their interactions with each other, and with the planet. This is probably what Galactus would be feeding on. It started when life did. <coughs> Dang ants and the acid! If Galactus turns matter into energy, we have to find out how much mass is in the biosphere. Life energy probably means the energy from life, and how much life is in a biosphere can be measured in terms of biomass. This could be the mass of all the people, or the ants, or the plants, but it's defined as tons of carbon, the element of life. As you might expect, estimating the mass of every life form on the planet is tough, so there's a bit of wiggle room when it comes to exact numbers. However, we do know that there are bacteria everywhere, and there are a lot of them. In the soil beneath your feet, on your skin, in the clouds, in the sky. So much so that it adds around 50 to 500 billion tons of carbon to the planet. And if Galactus ate all the cattle on Earth, it would be like eating four billion quarter pounders. Full of farts. <laughs> Though humans are numerous enough to drain a planet's resources like mini galacti, we're pretty low on the biomass scale. Humans make up 100 million tons of carbon, while all of our cattle make 150 million tons of carbon, which is less than all of the Antarctic krill at 380 million tons of carbon, which is less than all of the termites at 445 million tons. But if we add all of these up, the termites and the people and the cows and the plants and the bacteria and all of the fish in the sea, every other living thing, that's what Galactus will be feeding on. The most cited number for the mass of all life on Earth is between one and four trillion tons of carbon. Now, if Galactus was really smart, he'd be able to convert all of this matter directly into energy. We know how to do that too. But Galactus could eat all of the venomous animals on Earth and it wouldn't kill him because venom gets deactivated by your stomach acid when you drink it, so you could drink venom. But don't try it. According to the most famous equation, matter and energy are interchangeable, or E equals mc squared. So, if we convert four trillion tons of matter directly into energy, we get 300 million trillion trillion joules. How much energy is that? That's the cool part. This is almost exactly the gravitational binding energy of Earth, meaning the amount of energy you'd have to put into the Earth to overcome the gravitational attraction to itself and more or less explode it. It kind of makes sense in a weird way. So, if you turned all life on Earth into energy, you'd have enough energy to end all life on Earth. 
cool. Galactus' feeding strategy kind of makes sense now in a weird way, and it would probably be even more than this because we don't always include water content in our biomass calculations. And uh, uh, imagine what he could do if he was using more than just 600 millionths of a percent of Earth's total mass. Life is small, but it has a lot of potential. Because science. And a very special thanks to Loot Crate for sponsoring today's episode of Because Science. Loot Crate is a monthly mystery crate for pop culture fans filled with exclusive items and apparel. There are only a few days left to pick up this month's horror-themed crate featuring items from The Walking Dead, Friday the 13th, and more. Go to lootcrate.com slash because science and enter the code word because science. One word for 10% off. Thank you so much for watching. Galactus is cool, but so is galactose. It's a sugar in your body that when it breaks down, it becomes glucose, which is the main metabolic fuel for all humans. I didn't have anything else. <laughs>。one quick thing about the term energy. Energy is a measurement. It's how much something can do work on another system. So kinetic energy, uh, the energy content uh, of something like a fuel or, or something like that. This is potential to do work on another system. So you you got to stop saying that energy is like some mystical cloud like humans have energy your your brain has energy in it when you die there's energy release that's energy is not a magical cloud energy is like a meter saying that you're defined like humans are energy beings is the same thing as saying like humans are are on average around 2 meters tall it doesn't mean anything because it's a unit not a mystical force because science <laughs>